This film will review the derivative of a function of a single variable. It will then show how the two-dimensional coordinate system can be extended to a three-dimensional coordinate system and will show the graphs of some functions of two variables. Finally, it will define and show the geometrical significance of the first order partial derivatives of a function of two variables. Recall the definition of the derivative of a function f of x. The algebraic statement of this definition may seem rather imposing. When considered graphically, the definition is more readily understood. The graph of f of x is the set of points x, y, whose coordinates satisfy the equation y equals f of x. The selection of values for x and h will determine values for f of x and f of x plus h, and will specify points p and q of the graph. The difference f of x plus h minus f of x represents the vertical displacement from p to q, while h represents the horizontal displacement. The quotient f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h represents the slope of the secant line pq. As h varies, the point q varies, the secant line changes, and the slope of the secant line changes. For small values of h, q is close to p. The secant line is approximately the tangent line, and the slope of the secant line is approximately the slope of the tangent line. The limit, if it exists, is called the derivative of f of x, and represents the slope of the tangent line at point P. This same argument can be repeated for every value of x, which corresponds to a point of the graph where a tangent line can be drawn. For each x, the derivative provides the slope of the line tangent to the graph at the point x f of x. You should note that there are occasions when the derivative does not exist. For example, at point P of the graph shown, there is no tangent line. The function has no derivative at that point. The study of the graph of a function of two variables requires a three-dimensional coordinate system. The graph of f of x, y is the set of points x, y, z which satisfy the equation z equals f of x, y. Selection of values for the independent variables x and y will result in values of z, and hence points of the graph. For example, the surface shown could represent the graph of z equals f of x, y. If x and y are chosen in accordance with a relation g of x, y equals zero, that relation will restrict attention to a portion of the surface. For example, if x and y are chosen so that the points x, y lie on a circle in the x, y plane, the points determined by the function f of x, y will lie on a three-dimensional curve of the surface. If 
if x and y are chosen so that the points x, y lie on a parabola, the points determined by the function f of x, y will lie on a three-dimensional curve on the surface. Notice that if x and y are chosen so that the points x, y lie along a straight line, the points determined by the function f of x, y will lie on a plane curve on the surface. In particular, if y is held constant, say y equal a, with x allowed to vary, the resulting equation, z equal f of x a, has as its graph a two-dimensional curve which lies on the surface, but in a plane parallel to the xz plane. The function f of x y is, in effect, dependent on a single variable x. Look at the last graph again. If y is held constant, say y equal a, with x allowed to vary, the resulting equation z equal f of x a has as its graph a two-dimensional curve which lies in a plane parallel to the xz plane. The function f of x, y is in effect dependent on a single variable x. You have already considered functions of a single variable and their derivatives. The definition of the derivative of a function of a single variable can be readily modified to apply to the function f of x, y. Again, the choice of x, y determines a point p, while the choice x plus h, y determines a point q. And the quotient f of x plus h, y minus f of x, y divided by h represents the slope of the secant line, PQ. For small values of H, Q is close to P. The secant line approximates the tangent line, and the slope of the secant line is approximately equal to the slope of the tangent line. If the limit exists, it is called the partial derivative of f of x, y with respect to x, and represents the slope of the tangent line. Observe the effect when viewed from a three-dimensional perspective. The partial derivative of f of x, y with respect to y can be considered in a similar manner. In this case, x is held constant, say x equal a, while y is permitted to vary. The resulting equation, z equal f of a, y, has as its graph a two-dimensional curve which lies in a plane parallel to the y, z plane. The selection of values for y and h determines values for f of x, y and f of x, y plus h, and determines points p and q. The quotient f of x, y plus h minus f of x, y divided by h represents the slope 
of the secant line PQ. For small h, Q is close to P. The secant line PQ is approximately the tangent line, and the slope of the secant line is approximately equal to the slope of the tangent line. The partial derivative of F with respect to Y provides the slope of this tangent line. The same arguments can be repeated for every value of x and y, which correspond to a point of the graph where tangent lines can be drawn parallel to the xz or yz planes. This film has been concerned with showing you a geometric interpretation of partial derivative, methods of calculation, and applications. <laughs>